Aw, yeah. Hey, everybody. Qui-Gon Jinn here. We're going to talk about Pillars of Eternity. Tomorrow, Pillars of Eternity is releasing its second expansion, White Marches Part 2. And I am really, really fucking excited. Yeah, I swore. What are you going to do? You're an adult. Grow up. Deal with it. Before I get into it, I'm going to give a bit of a shout out, a bit of a, some recognition, some thanks so much to Cart Gaming. We'll put a link to his channel at, in the description as well as here in the annotation. And I just want to point out that we are using his gameplay for White Marches Part 1 for the backdrop of this video. I don't have any saves for the middle of the game and I didn't want to start all over and do, you know, 50 hours of gameplay before I got to the White Marches so you guys could see some gameplay of the White Marches in the background because I wanted to put this video out as soon as possible. So thank you so much, Cart, and much respect. You are one of my absolute favorite Let's Players. If you guys don't know who he is and you want to watch really good RPG Let's Plays coming from a very well-informed, very excited, and very proficient, and someone who is a very prolific Let's Let's player, definitely check out Card Gaming. Okay, something about the game in general. Pillars of Eternity is an amazing overall game because you don't get the bulk of your experience at your character advancement from combat. Combat is still extremely rewarding and it can be extremely difficult, especially if you raise the difficulty up. You can even have your companions die and not come back, by the way, which is something that's freaking awesome. But you really push the story along by pushing the story along and your characters develop quickly that way. What I like about this is that means you can create very unique personalities, very interesting characters that don't have to be min-maxed strictly for combat. This is something that's sorely need in a lot more role-playing games. The stats and the classes are not so traditional in this game that they are boring and easy to put aside. Let me give you an example, intelligence. It's actually extremely legitimate for you to have a high intelligence barbarian, something that you would see in almost no other games. Intelligence raises your area of effect size, and not only that, but the added bonus to the size based strictly from intelligence is the only part of your AoE that is not susceptible to friendly fire. Unless of course you're casting a spell that does not have a friendly fire aspect to it, but a lot of them do. This is just a short example to let you know that every single one of the statistics in this game have a combat component to them. And so you don't have to go and make every single melee character high strength and high constitution and every single caster high intelligence and every single agile character have high dexterity and just push your way through the game with almost no personality or quirks in your characters. White Marches Part 1 didn't just add 15 plus hours of interesting quests, maps to explore, items that are unique, powerful, and grow with you, and great companions. It added an overhaul to the game's combat and stats and AI, which was much needed. And Obsidian is the kind of company that makes their expansions feel as much an integral part of the game as possible, and I am expecting this to happen again with White Marches Part 2 when it arrives tomorrow. With added levels and abilities, AI changes, combat improvements, and companions, I am Pumping at the bit to start playing this. I cannot friggin wait. And something else that I found amazing was at the end of the game, the story at the end of the game, the epilogue was quite long and it was extremely tailored to the way I treated the world and the companions that I had in the world up until that end point. I'm not going to give anything away, but all I can say is I was a little bit selfish on my first playthrough and it really affected the lives of myself and my companions in the story at the end credits. And I was shocked and immediately wanted to start another playthrough right away. Most of the time when I finish a long role playing game, I get this empty, sad feeling where I'm like, yes, I've accomplished something but it's kind of over it's like finishing a series of books and just going oh i know i'm not going to be able to read anymore well i wanted to start all over again because it would have been like an alternative universe of the same book and this does not happen for me in role-playing games let's talk about the companions there are going to be more of them and i can't wait to meet them in the first expansion as well as the original game the companions were extremely interesting non-formulaic it's a phrase i like to use when it comes to role-playing games because i can't stand formula and just bursting with personality for for example, Hiraveus, if I can say his name right, was an Orlan druid that seemed more like a werebeast than a typical druid, or the grieving mother, a cipher, who was an ethereal psionic creature that hid herself in plain sight, and Zawa, practitioner of Nalpaska, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Anyway, he believes that suffering is the path to enlightenment. And a lot of monks classes in video games have that belief, but he added a side of comedy to it that sort of balanced out the dour side of monks that made them seem kind of boring. Without spoiling anything, you find him bathing himself in dead fish so that he can be as stinky as possible because he thought that his nose and his sense of smell needed to suffer and that would expand on his martial skills. And 
I don't get but it was pretty damn funny. And that's just a taste of the companions and there should be more to come in White Marches Part 2. When I took a look at the story trailer for White Marches Part 2, nothing was spoiled for me and I like that because I find that a lot of trailers, movie trailers, video game trailers, etc. tend to go a little too far in their revealing and I feel like it, it didn't do that for me this time but it did get me excited as it has some kind of evil golem army or something covering the north and I have no idea what's going to happen to them, where they came from and how I'm going to stop them, but I can't wait to get into it. So that's it guys. These are some reasons why I'm really excited for White Marches Part 2 and why I can't wait to get my hands on another playthrough of Pillars of Eternity. If you do not have this game, check it out. If you're still a little unsure, go to Cart Gaming, watch the first hour or two of the game. You will not be disappointed. And then head on over to Steam, pick up the game, pick up the first expansion, and then tomorrow pick up the second one because it's going to be amazing. You're going to love it. You've got my, you know, RPG seal of approval guarantee, whatever that means for you. All right, guys. That's about it for today. This is me, Kwai Jin, saying thank you for listening. Thanks for watching. Have yourself a great day, and thanks kindly. If you like what you heard, if you like what you saw, take a look around the channel, watch a couple more videos, tell me what you think, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and for God's sakes, play more RPGs. Thanks kindly. Bye-bye. On the left, my top five role-playing games of all time, and on the right, my top stories in games of all time. Click it, you know you want to touch it, channel.